Hello and welcome to our Sentinel one webinar. Thank you for carving out some time to join us today. I'm Carmen Villegas, Director of Vendor Business Development for Sentinel one And joining me today, we have one of our fantastic engineers, Mr. Juan Quintero. Hello, everyone. There are going to be three parts to today's webinar. We'll briefly go over our services and review a few point security market trends and how Sentinel one addresses these concerns and also some of their key differentiators, followed by a live attack and a deep dive of Sentinel One's capabilities. We encourage you to use the chat window for any questions throughout the webinar. So many of you have seen this slide before. For those of you joining us for the first time, I'd like to share a few of Exclusive Network's key differentiators. Our key contribution to the industry is that we specialize in cybersecurity and the cloud. By maintaining a specialization within a narrow set of rest of breed vendors, such as Sentinel One, exclusive networks can assist the channel and community with vendor specific training, sales, design, implementation, and pre staging, as, and of course, supply chain logistics, both domestically and globally, filling in the gaps, helping many different types of partners to supply and deliver relevant and vendor solutions to their customers. Market research reports show device security and security in general is getting a lot of attention at the C-level and even board of directors are showing concern with the level of security within the organizations. This is due to the lack of visibility and control they have. As you can see here, the endpoint security market size has been increasing over the years and it's not slowing down. And neither is the attack, surf the attack surface. As the attack surface expands, Companies are faced with challenges of protecting data across different cloud operations against unknown threats and an increase of remote workers, as well as the increase of BYOD, rogue devices, and IoT devices on the home networks, which we'll take, talk about later. And, and poorly secured cloud bases, cloud bases and continue to be a weak point for organizations ranging from simple misconfiguration issues to vulnerabilities and lack of resources. Multiple tools are widely available, enabling potential attackers to identify misconfiguration cloud resources. Companies are dealing with a lot of data loss and they are adopting and layering a lot of solutions with agents, resulting in agent and agent and alert fatigue and lack of resources to manage these tools. So what companies are now looking to do is to consolidate solutions to reduce the amount of agents and, and resources it takes to ma manage these tools. Hence, for organizations are adopting an effective solution um, that is utmost importance. Moreover, the quick detection and response also plays a vital role in addressing such threats. All this is making security professionals jobs a lot more challenging and they are also responsible for reducing this attack surface. So let's take a look at how we can help you by using a solution that offers the utmost effective and quick detection and response solution and addresses these endpoint security trends. Sentinel One is a next generation endpoint security that focuses on consolidation and automation. And the way that they're able to achieve this is on the consolidation portion, they reduce agent fatigue by combining both endpoint protection and endpoint detection response into one single agent with a multiple AI engines. One of the things that makes this agent great is it does not require online connectivity and it can make all of its decisions in real time without having to communicate back to a host. In this slide, we're going to dissect on how these engines work. On the endpoint protection side, they will use a multi-layer approach that focuses on executables. On the pre-execution layer, this is where 90% of the threats are blocked. This is also where local whitelisting and blacklisting functionalities reside. This is also where a cloud intelligence feed provides a reputation list and where the static AI and deep file inspection takes place. They are doing a deep file analysis and looking at the characteristics of the file, meaning if it's a good or a bad file. If it's a known bad file, Sentinel One prevents it on the pre execution from spreading laterally. 
For more sophisticated attacks, like zero-hour fileless attacks, this is where the on-execution layer takes place by using machine learning or behavioral AI. So if a process is looking to change a registry, upload a payload, or reach out to external entities, this is seen as malicious behaviors and kill it before it deploys. So the two engines are working simultaneously together, yields the highest efficacies, lowest false positives, and has the lowest system impact. I think it's important to mention here that use the attacks that use malware, 80% of those are zero day, which is why it's important to have an effective behavioral-based solution that gives you visibility and control versus a signature-based solution that lacks in this area. Built into that same agent is also the EDR engine, which gives you forensic analysis, a footprint of all of the attacks, whether it's malicious or suspicious. This is where you also have the remediation tools. For example, let's draw a scenario. Let's say the endpoint protection is turned off on a policy and the end user clicks on a malicious link and gets their endpoint encrypted. As an administrator, you will receive real-time notification with a built-out process view and steps to remediate it. On the automation piece, there's a patent technology with Microsoft that enables a one-click rollback, which then gets you back to the cleanest instance without having to run a script or doing an investigative analysis. That means it saves you a lot of time and resources. Also, rollback is a last resort. About 99% of customers do not use it. It's like an airbag in a car. You probably never use it, but it's a fail safe. And um, lastly, there is an EDR arm called the Deep Visibility. This is, this is an extremely helpful tool, specifically, specifically put in the most recent sunburst attacks. This threat laid dormant for nine months. Using a tool like this, you can you or your SOC team can do a threat hunting and expose anything laying dormant. Additionally, you have to limit your data that's stored for 14 days as a default and able to pull back to a year or more if needed. So we won't be going in too much into the different types of um, data, sentinel one captures and delivers in the storyline at this time, but I would like would like to mention that in the recent assessment, Sentinel One had the most correlated modifiers resulting in the least number of alerts compared to the competition, reducing alert fatigue. As I mentioned, you'll see uh, here shortly on how the data is consumed and delivered when Juan gives you guys the uh, real life attack demo. So the Sentinel-1 technology has always been a cloud-managed solution with a heavy emphasis on the vendor integration via a comprehensive API. The innovation continues as they further enhance their solution in the form of a sing Singularity XDR platform. Sentinel-1's DNA is endpoint security and detection and response. However, Sentinel-1 uh, continues to in uh, its innovation of one agent runtime protection logic and in order to provide faster automated protection and response capabilities giving C-levels and those board of directors peace of mind and giving those IT professionals time back to focus on more, more important things. There are a few common things that people are looking for when looking at uh, a new endpoint security. Because their current endpoint protection solution seems okay, but the renewal is coming up and they want to look at what else is out there before they just renew their current solution or their legacy AV like McAfee, ASET, Symantec, and so on, and how they want to, um, and they want to do something that is smarter, better, more advanced, or they're either go, um, got a lot of big complaints from either their current solution from the users, or they've suffered a breach and are looking for something better with it, uh, than their current solution. Because they want, um, or because they want protection solution that can automatically uh, respond to threats in real time on their behalf. And maybe it, when it comes to it down to the intelligence level, they don't want just a solution that will say, we identified a threat and shut it down, right? They want a platform that will say, we identified this process as a threat. Here's why we thought it was a threat. 
here's the action we took to neutralize it, and here's the entire threat story, including the threat vector, patient zero, the attack sequence, the process that the malicious actor called on, a list of everywhere else they've seen this threat on your network, and links to the articles where you can learn more about this, the type of threat. So think about which one of these best describes your customers. With Sentinel-1, they're getting access to a multifunctional platform that offers all of this, as well as USB and Bluetooth control, uh, application vulnerability, firewall control, a single bi-directional API with over 300 functions, making it possible to integrate with almost all enterprise applications. As mentioned, one of the trends is having remote workers and IoT device growth is exploding. And customers need to know where these devices are and whether they pose risk. There has been an increase in attacks in IoT devices, whether it's in the office or in the employee's home. Although IoT is not a new topic, there is a high level of concern. Looking back at 2020, there is a large increase in um, corporate managed devices speaking with these consumer devices. The average household today um, has 10 IoT devices. A top concern for companies is the, a direct attack on IoT devices that could lead to lateral movement, uh, whether it be a um, password that has been compromised. Um, then so the way Sentinel-1 addresses this concern is with Ranger. This is a cloud-enabled IoT discovery and control. So here we see the consolidation continue. Ranger is part of the same agent and uses passive and active scanning to figure out what's connected where. Sentinel-1's IoT discovery is highly differentiated from its competitors because IoT data is fed into the same data lake as the EDR data. Deep visibility can also help you answer the questions like, are my, camera, my IP cameras talking to my server farm in the middle of the night? If the answer is yes, then you can leverage the agent firewall control to effectively isolate these cameras or any other rogue devices. Ranger is also native to the one agent, one console code base and doesn't require any new hardware or network changes. When you're ready for the huge shift to Kubernetes managed cloud workloads or other containers, which we're starting to see, we are ready to support you with uh, the continuous integration and continuous delivery Sentinel-1 offers and protects um, your auto-scaling containers nodes without directly interfering with them. Sentinel-1 differentiates here in how they analyze and mitigate the threats in real time, which is important, important because containers are not immune to zero-hour, zero-day attacks, nor uh, and there's no other vendor that protects containers in real time. Plus, they also capture valuable EDR data to provide actionable context in the real time. Again, this is unique to Sentinel-1. All Kubernetes nodes are managed alongside all of the other Sentinel-1 protected agents using one single global console. So it's one pane of glass for everything. Some of uh, your customers may operate with a fully staffed security operations center, or SOC for short. Others have one or two individuals responsible for the security, right? So as mentioned before, one of the things that our um, companies are suffering or um, uh, challenges that they're facing is lack of resources. So Sentinel-1 offers a layer of security called Vigilance. This is our managed detect and response service team that offers they offer to customers that want a helping hand, want a helping hand. So um, this is available um, and is also very popular and available for MSPs. So think of vigilance as the SOC assist. Vigilance, the, which is the MDR service, is an optional optional service and is not required to have a quick and effective endpoint detection and response solution. Again, this is for those that are needing a helping hand. And with that, I will now give you a break from listening to me and um, hand it over to Juan for the fun part of the demonstration on how Sentinel-1 behaves during the attack 
and uh, when there's a misconfiguration that takes place. Juan, the floor is all yours. Thank you, Carmen. All right, so I'm gonna share my screen. Bear with me here. Just wanna verify that everybody can see my screen. You should be able to see the Sentinel-1 console. All right. So before I get into the demo, there's a couple of things I want to talk about. Number one is that we have the ability to offer our partners a POC. So if you guys like to try out uh, Sentinel-1, because I firmly believe there's no better way to learn than to get your hands dirty uh, with the tool, we can give you five licenses for two weeks, and we can even extend that period if, uh, if that's necessary. And then throughout that time, we can uh, get together and discuss uh, some of your own experiences with the platform. Additionally, we have created this demo site titled Read Only Demo, and we can give our partners read only access to this site so that even if you don't have a POC or your POC has expired, you can come in here and navigate the menus and use this as a tool to demonstrate Sentinel One to uh, your peers, your customers, etc. All right. So having said that, let's get into it. So what we're gonna do today, uh, we're going to simulate some attacks on these two endpoints that we have in this environment. And these are the two endpoints. You can see them. And then uh, we're gonna see the data that is generated uh, and Sentinel-1's uh, pre and post execution uh, protection behaviors uh, at play. So first, I want to show you guys how the policy is configured uh, for the two endpoints. So we have the demo site, we have some groups, and we have an endpoint in the detect only group and an endpoint in the protect group. So the detect only group, as the name of the group suggests, the policy is configured to detect only. This means that Sentinel-1 is watching, it's keeping a log of everything that is happening, uh, but it's not going to um, automatically act on any threats because that's the way that you configured it. The protection group, um, and first I should address, why is this grayed out? So in Sentinel-1, you have inheritance. So when you create a site, you have to create a, a global policy for that site. Later, if you create groups and those groups warrant a different protection scheme, you can come in here and change the policy to the groups. But if they don't, then you can just inherit from the parent. And in this way, you're never gonna have your endpoints just sit in there in a bucket or in a group unprotected because there's always gonna be something that they're inheriting from. And as you can see, the tool is natively multi-tenant. So even if at this site, um, I didn't create a policy, then it's going to inherit from my global policy. Okay, so the protect group does have detection and protection, and I'm actually gonna click on this so we can get some color in here. All right, and as you can see, once I've enabled the protection, then there is a level of protection that I can automate, which means that kill quarantine and remediation will happen automatically. We have some additional options down here. I particularly want to talk about the containment option. So in an environment where you don't have the ability to control uh, network security, this is really useful. This is really useful all the time, but particularly so in those environments when you don't have access to control network security. When a machine is under attack, say that machine is in a network where lateral communications are allowed, you can turn this on and then all connections to and from the machine are blocked with the exception of connections to and from the Sentinel-1 policy. All right, so now that we've taken a look at the policies, let's open the incident screens. We shouldn't have anything here. And let's go to our endpoints. So first we're gonna try to infect this machine. So this is the machine that has the policy configured to detect and protect. 
So here I have some folders with some uh, very well-known malicious payloads. So this is the first one we're going to try. So we are going to try to copy this to the desktop. Copying. Where'd it go? Uh, it's gone. Okay, so let's try another one. Let me try to just unzip this. Let's see if that works. And let's try to. All right, so we have some files here. Let's see if we can run them. And then let's open this other folder. Let's go in here and see if we can open this. And oh. all right, so as you can see, this stuff disappeared, and then we're good. When the Sentinel One is detecting or has detected an infection your little client icon would be red. So gray indicates everything is good to go. So let's take a look at our console. So we have some incidents that were generated as the result of the uh, different executables. So let's take a look at this one. And by the way, did you guys know that server was one of the very first um, malware or ransomware as a service? which means that you could actually um, buy this as a service from the guys who made it. So this is the incident screen. So if you have the protection configured in the way that we saw earlier, by the time that you get here, the threat should already be mitigated. And you're gonna see the actions that were taken automatically as a result of the configuration that you as the, as the administrator uh, made. So we can see the status, we can see the confidence level from Sentinel-1, you as the analyst can also set your own um, verdict for, for this incident, and then the status of the incident. We have information about the file, where it was first seen, the user associated, we have the signature, so you can actually click on this and go to virus total and get some added assurance that this is very bad. We have information about the endpoint. And here, if there were any indicators of compromise, um, you know, they would be shown here, right? And in here, this is actually my favorite screen. This shows you a storyline of everything that the attack was able to do, but there is nothing to see. And the reason being is that, you know, the executables were pretty much taken care of as soon as I try to put them on the machine. So this doesn't make for a very fun demo. So let's actually try this on a machine with the protection set to detect only. So here, I'd like to call this simulation mode. We are essentially allowing our machine to be affected by uh, malware. So here we have a, um, a spreadsheet with some macros. Now, macros are not bad, uh, but they are often utilized to do some bad stuff. So here we have this macro that kind of updates the currency. So you can see here that the currency updated. But then if I click on this other macro, then we are going to have uh, some bad things happen. And in an actual attack, these things would be hidden so the user wouldn't see them so that the attacker can execute whatever it is that they're trying to do uh, without being noticed. But for the purposes of this demo, we're pretty much showing a lot of what the attack is trying to do. 
okay? And of course, there's gonna be some information generated on the console as the result of this attack. I also wanna talk about something that Carmen mentioned in her slides about how a large percentage of new attacks are new. So there is a lot of really creative uh, attackers out there, but there is also a lot of opportunistic attackers. So essentially, a lot of what is being done is uh, those attackers are using already known malware and they're obfuscating the composition of the payload, of the initial payload, to make it look like something else. So essentially, the easiest way I can explain that is like the same doll with a different dress, right? So, and here we're seeing, you know, the different processes take place. And I have a folder here. So these files should be getting encrypted sometime soon. Uh, so what is happening is that if you have a tool that is heavily reliant on signatures, then you can get fooled by the same goal with a different dress. So that's why it's so important and why the endpoint protection industry is moving to more of a behavior analysis where the tool is watching. And if you have these new payloads, new attacks, that are not known, that haven't been seen, or that is really, you know, an old doll masked with a new dress, then it can catch it because Sentinel-1 is looking at what you're trying to look to do and not your dress, essentially. So let's take a look at what is happening in the console. So I'm gonna close this out. We refresh this, and we now have a real incident. Now, why is this red? Well, this is red because our policy for this group was to detect only, so mitigation actions were not taken. And the reason they were not taken is so that we could get more data and really appreciate the nature of an attack and all the things that happen behind the scenes that the user may not be aware of. And so we can get some data in here. So again, we have the status, the confidence level. Um, you can also set this as a true positive and then resolve it once you've done taking action. We have information about the file, information about the endpoint. Now here, we also have indicators of compromise. So Sentinel-1 is basically providing you information, leveraging the MITRE framework, and it's, this is the way that Sentinel-1 can explain to you all the behaviors that are observed as part of the attack. And then if you click on any of these links, um, this is one of my favorites, right? You can come in here into the MITRE page and read all about this. So you can better understand the behavior of the attack. And then if you come into the Explore tab, now we're going to have an actual storyline. So these are all the things that are happening as the attack progresses. This is happening in real time, and these things may still happen. So this shows how fast Sentinel-1 is able to get that data and display that data to the admin. So here is that uh, indicator of compromise. The attack is trying to delete the shadows in Windows. Okay, so let's deal with this. Actually, before we deal with this, let's check on the status of our endpoint. Ah, no kitties. So this stuff should be encrypted by now. Yeah, this is uh, not gonna work. Okay, so let's see if we can fix this. So I'm gonna come in here, come into my actions, to my mitigation actions, and I am going to Rollback, apply. Another thing I wanna mention while this is happening, if this attack, uh, because Carmen also talked about alert fatigue and you know, admins being overwhelmed, which is never a good thing. If this attack is being observed on multiple endpoints, you're still going to get the one alert. And then in here, instead of getting the one endpoint, you would have um, something that you can click on that shows you all the endpoints where this is uh, happening. The reason for that is essentially 
you know, you want to deal with the threat as quickly as possible. And then after that, you can go in there and investigate on each individual endpoint how things uh, were able to get there, right? But from a mitigation perspective, the number one priority should be to take care of the threat, which it looks like that has been done. Here you can see everything that was killed, quarantine, remediated, rollback. You can uh, download this into a CSV. So here we can see all the processes that were restored. And this is what you look for. Want to make sure that all this stuff is successful. All right. So let's see how our endpoint is doing. Ah, the kitties are back. So all is well when we can see the uh, the kitty pictures. Okay. So that's basically our demonstration of the uh, different attacks. So now I do want to kind of take you to some of the features that uh, Carmen was talking about. The first thing I want to show you is the div visibility. So div visibility is the threat hunting platform that is built into Sentinel-1. Now Sentinel-1 does have different SKUs, um, core control complete. This is part of the complete SKU. So threat hunting can be used uh, proactively it also can be used in forensic investigation uh, that you're doing as part of an incident. So if you go back to the incident and you go back to the overview, you can hunt for uh, data, but in the context of the signature of the attack, right? So that's one thing that you can do. But I've already prepared some queries here uh, so that you can see a little bit of data uh, or actually no data in some of them. I do want to show you there's some pre-built uh, queries already, including, uh, I'm sure you guys are familiar with uh, what happened with SolarWinds and FireEye. So within a couple of days of that happening, Sentinel-1 already had pre-built queries that you could run against your environment for um, you know, indicators of compromise related to the Sunburst uh, incident. So you can see them here. I actually ran a couple, and luckily um, there is nothing you can run a more simple query where you're just looking for um, data. So these are the things that you can expect to see when there is actual data, right? Processes, indicators of compromise, files, so creation, deletion, modification, and then there is a number of network actions and logins. So all that, and then of course you can click on these and you can get more information depending on what you're clicking on. You can also filter, so you can select some of these fields and then re-query, so this is a way to drill down until you get to where you wanna be to get the data that you want. Another thing I wanna show you is, uh, let me get back to the global scope, something that Carmen talked about, and that is Ranger. So Ranger is a way that Within the same agent, because Sentinel One uses just one agent, you can enable this license. Ranger is an a la carte license. Uh, so if you have the license, you can enable Ranger on your agents. And then you can scan the network where the agent resides. Think about the applications for that. In enterprise, big companies have or continue to be notorious for having issues with ghost machines in your data centers, IOTs, um, you know, in academia, in healthcare, when you're dealing with customers that are physically in your environment, you have a lot of devices that a lot of times you don't know are there. And in cybersecurity, what you don't know and what you can't see will hurt you, right? So another key takeaway from the screen is how consumable, just like the rest of Sentinel-1, how consumable this is. So basically, this is how you set it up. So you turn it on, you select um, you know, the protocols and ports you want to scan and your intervals. And then the first thing it's going to do is going to discover all the networks. And then you decide which networks you want to turn on uh, the Ranger scan functionality. And after that, you're going to get a device inventory. 
and this device inventory is ongoing. So it continues to scan, you get a breakdown of devices. So the visibility alone to me is, is worth the price. But in addition to that, right, um, obviously secure devices are already secured, but you can have visibility over some of the network devices. You have some of the devices that are unknown. So you can come in here, right? And you can apply tax to these devices, apply a device review, right? So this is kind of you saying, okay, we looked at this and this is trusted, this is not trusted, uh, this is okay, et cetera. Or you can isolate. So if you isolate a device, obviously if this device is in hassle grow installed, you can't control it from that perspective. But what you can do is, you can ring fence those devices in this same network that, that do have Sentinel-1 installed, and you can keep them from accepting communications from this device. So that's how this isolation works. That's essentially what it does. And organizations that are uh, sending employees to work from home, they probably would find this incredibly useful because we all know what is happening. Um, you know, like Carmen mentioned, our home networks are flat, they're full of smart things, and most people are using routers that don't really have any security features. So chances are that breaches have already happened or are happening. So the ability to keep your endpoint from communicating with things that it shouldn't be communicating with, uh, it's, it's a great thing. Okay, so that ends uh, the demonstration for today. Um, at this point, I'm going to turn it back over to Carmen. Thank you, Juan, and thank you for walking us through that demonstration. So as you guys see, Sentinel-1 um, not only gives you the uh, utmost sophisticated endpoint security, while you know it reduces the agent alert and the fatigue, um, and again, it's very lightweight, saving you and your customers a lot of time and the resources. Um, so again, with the gives you the visibility and control on the zero hour a day um, attacks, dormant attacks, vulnerability management, and control of the IoT devices and other rogue devices out there. Um, so, but again, don't just take our word for it. Check out some of these third-party assessment reports naming Sentinel One top endpoint protection and detection response solution. Also check out their latest and exciting cybersecurity partnership with Aston Martin Formula One. So we'll, again, this will be available to you guys. So you guys can um, go back and click on some of these links or um, we'll be available also check out our newsletter or our social media, which we also post them there. Um, and then Center One does have a few incentives for partners um, going on ending at the end of the month. They, both um, the sales account manager and engineer organization can um, get paid and, um, un, and who are involved in opportunities can make extra cash for setting a meeting and doing a POC. They can earn up to $750 for new clients. Um, and then again, um, Sentinel One is having an extra, uh, they're doubling that with, if you have Semantic customers, um, and, you know, and this is due to the experience that Semantic is, um, customers are experiencing, uh, experiencing some uncertainty, um, so they're offering uh, $1,500 for an endpoint uh, for uh, a meeting with a client, semantic client and a POC. So if you guys want to get additional information, uh, feel free to contact myself or your exclusive account manager. And then here are my details, along with some other Center One resource sites where you can find the, some of the latest information. So if you are interested in a uh, personalized demo or doing a POC, um, as Juan mentioned here, uh, again, or getting just additional information, uh, contact myself or um, your dedicated account, uh, exclusive account manager. Also, make sure to follow us on social media to stay up to date with all of our latest news, offerings and updates, um, and look for our exclusive networks monthly newsletter for a consolidated snapshot of our vendor news and tools and upcoming events. Um, so if you guys are not uh, getting the newsletter today, uh, just let us, uh, your account manager know, we'll make sure to include you in our distribution list. 
And as always, here are some of our best of breed vendors. Um, as I mentioned earlier in the webinar, if you want to learn more about Sentinel One or any of our vendors, please contact your dedicated account manager or myself. And with that, I will hand it over to Mr. Josh Matos to walk us through some of the questions in the chat window. So we actually do have a few questions here. Uh, so the first question is, what is the minimum purchase requirement? Okay, so I guess I'll take it. Um, so essentially, uh, there is uh, different numbers for if you're just reselling the solution versus uh, offering the solution as a service, which means that you will own the license and, and manage the, the endpoint solution for your customers. I believe for reselling is 50, for uh, managed services is 100. Perfect. And how long is the data retained for? So different parts of the of the uh, console have different areas that you know you can or, or how or the, the way that it works is on different screens you can go as far back as uh, three months, you know, further back six months. Uh, and I believe the data is retained up to a year and then there are um, within the SKUs you can um, pay for longer data retention periods. Perfect. And we do have one last question here. Does Sentinel One offer a warranty? So yes, there is a warranty. Uh, the warranty is uh, of, uh, I believe, a thousand dollars per endpoint up to a million dollars ransomware warranty. Perfect. So that seems to be all of our questions for today. So thank you for er to everyone for joining and thank you Juan and Carmen. Have a great rest of your day, everyone. Thank you.